So the star is, is the thing that leads them from the east, as it says, to eventually to Bethlehem. And in fact, in Matthew chapter 2, it says that this star comes to rest over the house. Notice a house there, not a stable. The stable is only in Luke's gospel. So the house where Jesus is born. So it seems to be some kind of very strange stellar event, not a normal kind of star, because it's moved all the way from the east, led these wise men to Bethlehem itself. So the wise men, all it says about the wise men is that they come from the east. And the term that we have, or the term that we translate as wise men, is magi, which is a plural noun um, from magos or magos. Um, and the meaning is perhaps a little uncertain. Uh, but one thing that's clear is, is that they're from the east. It's surmised that because they've seen this star, because they've read the symbols, of, uh, the signs, if you like, and said that this star means that a king of the Jews is to be born, then it's uh, surmised that they are astrologers. Um, and then they eventually follow the star to Bethlehem. Uh, but we know very little about them. In subsequent Christian tradition, all sorts of things are said about these wise men. For a start, they're said to be kings. Um, and that perhaps comes from um, an idea in Old Testament prophecy that, that kings will come to, to find the Messiah, I think. So in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 60 at the beginning there, we get the idea of kings bringing their uh, glory to the, to the Messiah. Um, and uh, so one sort of bit of speculation, if you like, is that they're kings, not just astrologers, but kings. They're rich, obviously, because uh, they bring these gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But in other Christian traditions, we even have things like their names. Uh, I think it's Caspar, Melchior and Baltazar. I think those are the names given to them in, in the tradition. So that's all speculation. If you like, maybe I should just read you all we know, all we hear about these wise men or kings uh, in Matthew 2. So at the beginning of Matthew chapter 2, it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was, has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. Now it's interesting because there is a, a traditional nativity that we have in mind, so something that you might have performed in at school, something that you might have seen in a, a play or the like. Uh, so we have this traditional idea of the nativity, but that's actually sort of a conflation of the two nativity stories that we get in the New Testament, one from Matthew and one from Luke. And it's interesting because the wise men and the shepherds are two of the key features in that nativity story. Uh, but certainly um, in terms of time, in terms of the narratives, there seems to be a distinction about the times when these arrive. So in Luke's gospel, we hear about the shepherds uh, and an angel announcing to them, a host of angels announcing to them that the Messiah has been born, that Jesus has been born. And that appears to be on the same day. It says, uh, for this day, a king has been born. Uh, and then they head to uh, Bethlehem to find Jesus the same day. Whereas in Matthew, there's a, a sense, uh, in Matthew we hear about the Magi, the wise men, there's a sense there that this is sometime later, that the wise men follow the star, which has appeared at Jesus' birth, but obviously it takes them some time to get from the east, uh, and so to arrive sometime later. But what we see in our traditional nativity is on one side, uh, the shepherds, on the other side, the wise men, all together with the star above. And in fact, I was just looking at the Christmas cards uh, on my shelf at home, and, and you see this traditional scene. So here, um, these, are, these, in fact, in this one, we've got the shepherds pointing at the star. So a complete mix there of, of Matthew and Luke. The shepherds from Luke, as if following the star that it says in Matthew that the wise men follow, and the star there resting above the stable. And of course, the stable is a feature only mentioned in Luke's gospel, whereas the star only mentioned in Matthew's gospel. So really, um, we take our nativity story as a sort of an amalgam of the two. There is an uh, historical background for a kind of special astronomical feature at this time. And so in a way, since the beginning, people thought about this question and during the, the course of history, we have four solutions, in a way, for, for this problem. And the first one is just uh, saying, okay, this was a miracle. This was not a, a natural star. It was a kind of angel who, who directed them, and they thought it's a star. So this is, it's just a miracle. This is one solution. The other is, it's a kind of supernova, 
which exploded and was visible for some weeks or a certain amount of time in the east. But again, we don't know of any supernova around this time, so this is more or less ruled out out of astronomical reasons. The third option is that it is connected with a comet. And most of the nativity pictures again depict the star of Bethlehem with a tail. So the idea is that it was a kind of comet. And indeed we know that people watched and uh, observed the Halley's comet in the year 1211 before Christ. So that means six or seven years before the, the birth of Jesus. But on the other hand, if we follow the fourth option, which was developed by the famous astronomer and at the same time theologian, Johannes Kepler, because he was interested in this question, he has written a, a book about the, the star of Bethlehem, and initially he thought it's a, it was a supernova, but then in the year 1604, he witnessed a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, and at the same time Mars came close to this meeting point of Jupiter and Saturn, and so three of the main planets were, visi were visible uh, very close together. And he knew from ancient sources that since Aristotle there was an understanding if the, the main planets come close together, this is an important sign. And Kepler, as it was usual in his time, was not just an astronomer, but also an astrologer. So he was able to read the, the signs. And so when, when he experienced this conjunction in 1604, he calculated back, oh, was there a similar conjunction in the time of Jesus? And then he found out that actually in the year 7 BCE, according to, to our calendar now, in the year 7 BCE there was actually the same uh, appearance, that means Jupiter and Saturn came very close together, and a little bit later Mars also joined the two. And this uh, meeting, in a way, was seen three, three times because of the, the different speed of the movement of the planets, although they just cross each other once, but it, if you look from the Earth, it looks as if they would meet three times, and this actually happens from July till November. So that means we have three, meetings po three meeting points, three conjunctions of these two main uh, planets. And this makes a lot of sense in connection with ancient astrology because the, the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn, they had a specific meaning. And this meaning can also give a kind of background for the story in Matthew. So Jupiter is always seen as a kind of kingly planet. That means he represents kingship because he's the, the highest god in the Roman pantheon. And Saturn represents the ancient god of Kronos, that means of time. The, the meeting point of these two planets uh, actually happened within the zodiacal constellation of Pisces. And Pisces was seen as a representative of the land of Israel or of the, this area of Syria, Palestine within the, or on the celestial map. And so that means a king, a time, a time of uh, a change of time, and the land of Israel. And this makes it understandable that this wise man, that means this astronomers coming from the east, ask in Jerusalem who or where is the newborn king of this country of the Jews. And actually, we, we have uh, cuneiform tablets from. Uh, Babylon, which demonstrate or which uh, make sure that uh, astronomers were able to calculate and to know that this uh, constellation between Jupiter and Saturn took place in the year 7 during this uh, time. So they, they knew about it. And so, again, it's at least uh, not completely out of the picture that people uh, made their way to the West to, to venerate this newborn king.